Hey, this is Dr. Newhouse. I want to talk to you about bunion surgery and what you can expect after surgery. Bunion surgery is something that we commonly do in the office. It's a very good procedure for eliminating the pain that's associated with the bunion, really the only way. There are certainly things you can do before you resort to surgery, such as using bunion pads, uh, cushions in the area. There's a little bunion splint that people try to sleep in at night. Not really gonna work, but you can certainly try that. Sometimes a cortisone injection will help. Wearing wider shoes certainly does help, and changing your shoes can help with a bunion, but oftentimes surgery is necessary. So when surgery is required, people often ask me, what's gonna happen, what do I need? So first we take an x-ray in the office. We measure the angles between the first and second metatarsals. Look at the, the surface of the first metatarsal, look at the cartilage, the angle of the cartilage, which will cause the toe to shift over next to the second toe. All of these measurements decide, help us decide what type of procedure you need. There are procedures at the base or the bottom of the metatarsal. There's other procedures that we do up towards the head of the metatarsal. Um, you will have to stay off of your feet longer if we do what's called a base procedure, meaning if you have a bigger bunion, it takes longer to heal and may require you to be off of your feet. However, the good news is most people have a bunion that we can do what's called a head procedure. And with a head procedure, uh, we cut the bone, shave off the bump, and realign the joint. Uh, we will fixate that with either a screw or a staple um, or some other form of fixation, depending on what, uh, what your bone needs. Uh, with that, um, we do it in the hospital. It takes about an hour or less to do. Um, you go to the hospital, it's, in, it's outpatient surgery, meaning you're in and out very quickly. Um, See, other things that people ask me, uh, sedation, you know, do you have to go to sleep to have bunion surgery? No, you don't. Um, they will start an IV, get a little medicine in there, and it makes you kind of drift off to sleep so you don't really know what's going on. We numb your foot up, and then you're kind of awake, but you don't really remember what's going on because of the medication that you've been given, but you have no pain during the procedure, and most people do not remember anything. Um, from the operating room experience. They wake up, their foot is numb because of the medication that we use after we're finished. We numb the foot back up. Um, the foot's wrapped up in a big puffy bandage and you stay off of it for the first few days. Then we'll see you back in the office and most people with a typical bunion, what we call a, a mild to moderate bunion where we do the head procedure, um, where we get a screw or a staple up in the front of it, we'll be able to start walking on that foot relatively quickly in what we call a cam walker, which is a boot that protects it. It's like a walking cast. And that boot you stay in until you're able to get back into shoes. Now bone, because we're cutting the bone, will take six to eight weeks to heal for most people. Um, so you can expect a minimum of six to eight weeks of wearing the boot. If you're a quick healer, you may get into a shoe a little bit earlier. Um, even after you're back into a shoe, say it's six, eight weeks out, the bone is healed, you're still gonna have swelling. That's one of the big problems with foot surgery is gravity pulls the fluid down into the area that's healing. So it's not uncommon for people to have swelling in their foot for several months after a procedure is done, whether it's a hammer toe or a bunion or some other procedure that we do. Typically with bunions though, I will see people swell for uh, several months on and off based on their activity level. And they may do great for a period of time and then all of a sudden out of the blue, they'll start swelling again. However, most people can return to full activity within two to three months, um, even exercising and, and being active, working at a job where you're on your feet. Um, some people will have to take off of work. Again, if you have a standing job that requires a lot of heavy lifting, you're gonna have to stay off of work versus the person who has a desk job. If you have a desk job, you can, I've put people back to work almost immediately after surgery in certain cases. Uh, we really take that on a case-by-case -case basis, um, depending on what your job might be. Um, another question I get is how much pain is associated with a bunion? Um, we do give you strong pain medication because foot surgery does hurt, bunion surgery does hurt because we're cutting the bone and realigning things. Um, so you will typically have pain medicine for the first week or so. After that, most people only need it at the end of the day if they've been up on their feet a lot, if they are experiencing a lot of swelling. Um, typically stitches will come out at about two weeks. There's usually not a very large scar. People heal very well from bunion surgery. Um, occasionally, I will send somebody to physical therapy because you can get stiffness in the joint following a bunion surgery because we open the joint up, realign things, and stitch it all back together. And some, some people will scar down and they'll get 
a, a stiff big toe joint. Physical therapy can help that to regain your motion. Um, not everybody needs it though. I will give people instructions on doing that at home um, as well as sending them to therapy uh, if they are not able to do that themselves. Um, afterwards, some people will need an orthotic, which is an insert in the shoe. Um, not everybody will I put into a orthotic, but um, there are people that have certain biomechanical conditions or certain um, imbalances in tendons where they need more support uh, to help prevent a recurrence of a bunion. Uh, bunions can recur even after surgery. It's not likely, but it can happen. Um, some of the risk factors with bunion surgery, you can have a undercorrection or an overcorrection of a bunion, meaning it's too straight or not quite straight enough. Um, I prefer to err on the side of having it be not quite straight enough because shoes have a little natural curve to them. Um, our foot has a little natural curve to it. So I try not to get bunions perfectly straight. Um, it just looks more natural, and that's what we're going for, is a cosmetically appealing foot uh, that doesn't hurt. Um, pain is another thing. You may always have some pain because the toe's been functioning out of alignment for a long period of time. So it's not uncommon to have some aches and pains. Some people will say they can feel when it's going to rain, when the, you know, there's a storm coming in. That's more of an arthritis type of a problem, but uh, that, that can be seen um, after bunion surgery. Um, now we do use screws and staples as I mentioned. Um, those typically will stay in forever. They don't need to come out unless there's a problem with them, meaning they get loose and, and back out or um, some other strange issue goes on. Not very common. Most of the time the hardware will stay in. Um, it won't go off at the airport. I've yet to have anybody tell me that they've been stopped by security because of hardware that they have in their foot from anything that I've done. Most of the screws and staples these days are made out of a, a titanium type alloy material which will not set off the uh, alarm systems at uh, airports going through the x-ray thing that they have there. Um, I think that is a, a good summary of what bunion surgery is all about, what you can expect afterwards. Um, if you have more questions, uh, we've got more details on the website. You can certainly come into the office for a more thorough discussion. Um, hopefully you can see some of the before after pictures that we have here for you that uh, you will get a good result. People are happy with bunion surgery. It's one of those things that I recommend people do when their foot gets to the point where they're just uncomfortable doing everything. I do tell people to put it off until it hurts to, to the point where you're just you know, your, your daily living activities are affected because of the pain associated with the bunion. Um, it's not a cosmetic procedure. It is done for pain and insurances do cover it because they understand that it causes pain and affects your activities, uh, affects your ability to work and, and do the things that you need to do. Um, so that's a good summary of bunions and uh, bunion surgery. If you have questions, please let me know.